this is selfish. I want to know myself how to make my uh, ACL deficient knee be able to go a little bit uh, longer because it does get sore golden. And I, I'm just going to give you an observational thing uh, that, that I observed. I did a triathlon several years ago when I was, when I was training more for that type of sport. Mm -hmm. And the short of it, it was Olympic distance. So, you know, a very short triathlon, relatively speaking. But during the last 10K after my, uh, I was already fatigued from the swim and the, and, the, and the bike ride, right? I noticed that when I was running on grass, and this is going to, you're going to get to surfaces. It actually yep. felt better, Golden. And I know that there's a lot, of, it's just and and, and, and and then when I ran, ran on the concrete in the park around where the mm -hmm. lake that we, we ran, my knee was actually aching me more. The vibrations were, were bothering me. So I would run the shoulder, you know, on the grass, Smart. even if I was catching the midpoint between two parking lot sections, I'm running yep. the middle part of the grass there. Smart man, smart man. And, and so <laughs> with that, kind of expand on that and, and give me sort of the precepts that your dad learned and that, that you have kind of more formalized. If, okay. And then, yeah. then I want to see your little thing. That you and have. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. This is kind of okay. a long-winded way of Let's doing do, it. But okay. I, I okay. think it'll make more sense order. if I just kind of set it up this way. Perfect. Um, so, okay, you can all laugh now. Um, <laughs> this is 10-year-old me crossing the finish line of my first uh, marathon. Uh, so, uh, and again, you know, had been been taught to, to run like a Kenyan. And um, let's see here. <clears throat> and that world record still holds as far as uh, I think we spoke. Yeah, so yeah. That age, it's that age match. Indeed. So, yeah. Yep. Um, so let's see, we talked about some of this stuff, but I, you know, relatively speaking, um, I, I'm going to get to the form point, but this is really what gets us there is, um, you know, for me as a, also a shoe salesperson at the time, you know, I, I had two problems, like all the techie running shoes and the cool technologies that I love. And I love running shoe technology. You know, when I was a kid, A6 gel was new. Brooks Hydroflow was new. Nike had Air. Um, Reebok had 3D Fusion DMX with the air moving back and forth. And of course, Saucony had my favorite grid, ground reaction inertia device. Like, <laughs> so cool. Um, and, and yet injury rates continue to rise each decade. And that's frustrating if, um, you know, if you're selling these shoes. And then of course, also, as you, as you people know, chronic foot pathologies are higher than ever and they continue to increase each decade. And that's, that's pretty frustrating too. So, and there's, you know, I could go into various studies on, you know, how and why this is the case, but um, you know, we don't really have time, but needless to say, we taught this technique that I'm going to talk about here in a second to our customers at the store. Uh, and that, that was a very unique thing. You know, you don't usually go into a shoe store and have them teach you how to run. You usually go in and they sell you a pair of shoes. Um, but we kind of felt like, you know, uh, if you, if you don't teach people how to run, getting them shoes might not be as effective. Um, and this is like any other sport. It's absurd to just like give people like, all right, here's a football. Good luck. You know, or like, here's a basketball. Good luck with that. You know, that, that, it just doesn't work. Right. Um, and maybe if our shoes weren't fighting the way that we actually naturally move, that would be better. Um, but, um, you know, I think for us, what it came down to is, is running technique truly matters. And so I think this is, is where you were kind of going, Dr. Pearl. Um, and, and, and what we find, if, if you kind of look through things, is that the body has a natural self-defense mechanism. And you can all, you know, if you want, stand up right now, jump straight in the air, just a half inch in the air and, and land on your land on your heels with your knees locked and even a half inch jump creates a lot of force and it's painful. Um, whereas I can have you jump 20 times as high, jump 10 inches in the air and land however your body wants to land. And you, what you will find is your foot hits the ground in way, uh, underneath your knee such that what your body does is it bends the ankle joint, your foot muscles get involved, your posterior chain gets involved, your knee bends and your hips bend. And you have this, basically this three foot spring that runs from your hip all the way down to your toes and all those joints bend and move. And it pulls the pressure off the joints and puts the pressure on the muscles. And I'll probably say this uh, multiple times, muscles adapt, joints don't. Uh, and so this is good, this is what we want. And you know, I can get up on this table I'm at right now, jump five feet in the air, and use that big three foot spring to absorb impact. And frankly, running is just the same thing. It's, it's, a, it's a, um, a sequence of jumps, right? 
and we are leaving the ground when we run. And so it really is a sequence of jumps. And I think there's a pretty big link uh, between, um, you know, the way people are running. If you look here at this slide, you know, overstriding, most of you are probably familiar with this. Most runners overstride when they run, meaning their foot lands out in front of their knee. Their knee is fairly straight. It's in, and then the foot is landing dorsal flex. So toes up, heel down landing, right? Um, and instead of landing the way, if, if we take any of you guys, take your shoes off and have you go run down the sidewalk in front of your house or, or office right now, none of you are going to do this without a shoe on. So shoes have enabled you to move in a different manner than humans have run throughout all human history or moved throughout all human history, both running and walking. And it's my contention that shoes have changed the way we run. And uh, the reason I go here is if you look before the 1960s, we basically did not have runners running this way. And it's not that we didn't just have runners not running this way. We didn't have anybody running this way. Go watch any movie pre-1960 and watch the way people run versus watch any movie now when people are running and you see a drastic difference in the way people move. You know, if you happen to have old running film you'll see the same thing of Olympians, you know, or runners just casually running pre 1960s, very few, if anybody over striding or landing with that heavy heel strike with the toes up, heel down landing. And now the data says that about 83% of runners are over striding to some degree. So, you know, over four out of five people that you work with every day are moving in a way that humans have not moved throughout all human history. Um, and so I think there's a connection there because I truly think that shoe technology is better. Shoes are lighter, um, et cetera, but running injuries haven't gone down. And I think it's because we're moving wrong. And so I think that leads us to, you know, this idea we need, it's on all of us to teach people how to move. Right. And, and this applies to walking to a degree as well. Um, but you know, the thought I had at the time is like, why is it that people are running so different in shoes? Um, and I'm going to come back to this a little bit later. Uh, but I think the, uh, you know, the point is that, you know, virtually every shoe now, uh, you know, start, starting with the first Nikes uh, up through now, 98% of all shoes are twice as thick in the heel as they are in the front part of the shoe. The back half of the shoe is twice as thick. It's also twice as heavy. The, all the technology and cool stuff is in the back half of the shoe. And you also have these hard plastic heel counters in the back that are supposedly supposed to provide stability that adds weight to the back half of the shoe and it changes the gait cycle and we can talk about that in a minute but you know there's there's really good research from harvard um you know telling us that people that are landing in an overstride position which is the way most people are running their their initial impact or their vertical loading rate with the ground is three to five times higher you know, not, not 30 to 50% higher, but three to five times higher than somebody landing underneath a bent knee the way humans have always landed throughout human history. And each of us lands with about three to five times our body weight on top of that. So if you're looking at 500 pounds of force. And I just, you know, as someone who sells shoes, you know, you might find this statement funny, but like 500 pounds of force versus one inch of the coolest cushioning technology in the world, it's just not a good match. You know, it's not a fair fight. Um, no, you know, no cool technology that's one inch thick, which is about your thickest running shoes out there is ever going to be able to effectively, um, you know, fix 500 pounds of force. So, so this is what we see with most people. And, um, uh, you know, this, this is where we are with, with again, 80% of runners out here, typical, uh, high school athlete, uh, this one, uh, Dr. Pearl, you know, Jay Spector. Yes. He put this one together. Okay. So, so. I had, I had given a speech and he actually came to me and he showed me this, um, you know, he's like, I've got this girl, we've tried everything. She's got terrible shin splints. What do I do? You know? And I'm like, well, can, can you get me a video of her running? And he's like, I actually have one. So he's got this slow-mo video of her running right here. And I took one look at it and I was like, oh my gosh, of course she is. Everybody right now, pull your, pull your um, toes up towards your face and feel how tight your shins get. Okay. Um, now just look at her and see her toes being pulled up towards her face, which is again, the way most people are run. And a lot of that is the back half of the shoes, a lot heavier and thicker. Um, and remember that she's hitting the three with three to five times her body weight. Right. Uh, and so you can see the arm over stride as well. You can see she's in keyboard posture, uh, her hips are back, right. Not as bad as most people. 
Um, but, you know, just enormous arms, slow cadence. Uh, and then again, that foot contacting out in front of the knee with a relatively straight knee position, like no brainer. I would say in my opinion, 98% of all shin splints and distance runners are tied to this right here. You know, just simply the way that people are moving on top of, of course, you know, some, some, uh, overtraining or whatever. So, um, but this is what we typically see. And so, um, it, this is really great stuff for you to break down anybody you meet with, um, because you can see this in about 10 seconds of just watching somebody from the side run up and down an aisle at your clinic or out, out in front on the, um, uh, you know, on the sidewalk, 